As the Carolinas continue to reopen, we are closely watching testing and trends in our local cases. And it's especially important after North Carolina saw its biggest single day increase on the first day phase two went into effect. The state reported 1,107 uh, cases on Saturday. Uh, yesterday, that dropped by more than half to 497 new cases. Now, the difference is the number of tests also dropped to its lowest level in 12 days. And that makes a state total of more than 23,000 cases since the pandemic began. I want to break that down by looking at counties. Mecklenburg County still has the highest number with 3,231, but also has the biggest population, of course. Rowan County has a much higher concentration of cases, and that's due in, in part to all the nursing home outbreaks that we've been covering. And for the first time, South Carolina cases topped 10,000 yesterday. The state reported an increase of 209, and the most in our area are in York County at 340. But South Carolina also started posting estimated cases. And this is a look at their map. The state believes York County alone may have up to 2,000 unconfirmed cases. It is still very important to get more testing done and to find out how many people are actually infected. And this week, health officials will test for cases in Iredell County. The testing site on Wednesday is in, on, in the Southland Shopping Center. And on Thursday, it's Mooresville High School. And they're focusing on people with a higher risk of exposure, including first responders and health care workers. And more than a third of the people with coronavirus don't feel sick. And by the time they do, there's a good chance that they have already infected someone else. New guidance from the CDC says 35% of patients are asymptomatic. The agency also estimates four out of every 10 transmissions of the virus happen before people feel sick. Nationally, almost 100,000 people have lost their lives to COVID-19, and there are concerns about social distancing this holiday weekend after we've seen video of people swarming beaches, pools, and churches, and reporter Ennis De La Cuerta is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, new images of crowds coming out in droves for the holiday weekend, but many not following social distancing guidelines. In Southern California, a popular hiking trail forced to close after large crowds showed up. In Ocean City, Maryland, thousands flocked to the boardwalk, some without masks. It's really crowded. It's beautiful out. You know, it's fun. Everybody's having fun. At the Jersey Shore, business owners happy to reopen. It's insane on how many people are out here today. I didn't expect this at all. Aerial images from Florida showing people swarming Daytona Beach. There's two people out the sunroof throwing money. Police referring to the scene as a gauntlet. This type of behavior is unacceptable. We don't want people coming to our city, disrupting our city. Many places of worship also reopening for the first time this Sunday. Congregants sitting apart at this church in Alabama. Uh, I talked with my deacons and they uh, agreed that we felt like that we could do this, uh, do this safely and that it was a good and it was the right thing to do. With all 50 states now easing some form of social distancing restrictions, at least eight are seeing an increase in new reported cases. In Santa Cruz County, California, new concerns Mother's Day celebrations may have contributed to a 20% spike in cases. And in Arkansas, officials say a high school pool party led to a second spike. And New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announcing professional sports teams can return to their facilities for training. This as Major League Baseball, the NBA and NHL continue discussions with their players unions about resuming their seasons. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Well, today is Memorial Day when we traditionally take the time to remember those who have sacrificed their lives for our futures. But today's ceremonies will be different all because of the pandemic. Many of the ceremonies will be live streamed online. For example, people can watch the annual observance at the Arlington National Cemetery online, but the cemetery will be closed to the public. Only family members are allowed to visit their loved ones grave sites and everyone has to wear face masks. The National Park Service will also broadcast a commemoration hosted by two dozen parks. It wasn't a question of are we going to do something or aren't we going to do something? It was a matter of how can we still honor these fallen men and women while at the same time protecting our visitors and folks who might want to come out. The National Memorial Day's concert will also be virtual. Well, many people say that they are choosing to stay home, even though many states, uh, including the Carolinas, are opening to more businesses. And a National Associated Press survey showed 42% of the people who went to restaurants and gyms regularly said 
they would feel comfortable going again. Our consumers make up about 70% of the U.S. economy. And if there isn't a total recovery in spending, many companies will permanently close. Car rental company Hertz filed for bankruptcy because of the pandemic. And the company has seen an abrupt decline in revenue and future bookings. The travel industry, of course, as a whole, has been devastated by COVID-19. Hertz says that it's planning to stay in business and restructure its debts. And it has already tried to stem some losses by letting go of 12,000 employees. The pandemic has been challenging for retailers especially, but Macy's is reopening more stores for the holiday weekend shopping. 80% of stores will either be open or they'll have curbside pickup. The company expects all stores to open by late June. Macy's did put in new safety measure, measures, including no touch beauty consultations. And the move comes as the company is predicting a loss of more than a billion dollars for the quarter. In other news, you might have missed it if you went to bed early, like I did. But Brad Keselowski won the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Last night's storms caused a bit of a rain delay for more than an hour, but Keselowski held off Jimmy Johnson for his first Coca-Cola 600 victory. Then overnight, NASCAR disqualified Johnson's second place finish after his car failed a rear alignment inspection post race. That moved Chase Elliott from third to second place. Now more races are planned at the Speedway this week. will also be without fans. And there is an Xfinity Series race tonight and the North Carolina Education Lottery 200. It's tomorrow night and the Alsco Uniforms 500 Cup Series race is on Wednesday night.